Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Lisa Brin and welcome to my mini masterclass on rubber band exercises for the finger. I'm so excited to present this to you because I want to offer you an affordable way to take care of yourself and rubber bands absolutely do it. So join me for my class as we check through our checklist and ensure that you're getting the most out of affordable self-care tools that will do the most for you. So course overview. This is pulled for my large class. And so my large class is rubber band in addition to a few other modalities, um, hand web, the flex bar, uh, hand putty, as well as uh, a few other options. So this class specifically is just on rubber band exercises and how to use this tiny, tiny tool. So my goal for you is to teach you how to one, be engaged in your own health, which you already are because you have decided to sign up for this class and you're here, so that's awesome. I want to ensure that we're continuing to build your skill sets. So all of us need work on our skills as we know them because sports medicine is always changing and always improving. So we take what is not working for us and we chuck it and then skills that we're implementing that we just aren't getting the results we want. This is the perfect opportunity to tweak them or make additions to get the most out of your rehab. Our goal is to successfully give you warmups that are useful to you and beneficial to don't just tax your body and injure them or injure your pulleys and your tendons and your fingers. And then we want to take all of the ideas and strategies that I give you today and implement them. And my recommendation is to just grab something and start implementing it right away. And don't be hesitant if it's hard at first because new habits and new techniques are always hard at first. But the more that you play with them and the more that you make it fun and interesting and entertaining, the easier it is to apply it and the better you get at them, okay? So, so don't be a nervous nilly that you're not excellent at it because none of us are excellent at it right, at, right out of the gate. That's just the way it goes. So who am I? I'm a climbing specific medical provider. I work with climbers all over the US and my number one goal is to give you all of the all of the tools that you need to better heal yourself. So give you trips, tricks, give you step-by-step -step tips and tutorials and to empower you so that you have an excellent year of not being injured. I've also started a new podcast. It's called Unsprained, and that's a podcast about climbing injuries and staying away from them and being healthy. So that's also something you can keep an eye out for. And my biggest goal is for why I'm in it is because you most likely are injured. So here are all the injury statistics that I just keep toting over and over because it gives me a push to get out there and to really try to make a difference because as a whole, as a climbing community, we are super injured. So one out of five of us have climber's finger, which is a pulley issue of your A2 pulley. 50% of us have the upper limb that has tendonitis, and over half of the injuries that we see in climbing occur below the wrist. So we're talking finger, hands, um, thumb, the wrist itself. And then the one that is really scary to me is that nine out of 10 of you guys that are most likely of you guys that are watching um, are injured. And not only are you injured, but you have more than one nagging injury that just doesn't seem to heal. And research is showing that you guys have one plus injuries and you have them for more than one year. So that's what I'm here is to try to make a difference and try to support you so that you can move along and ensure that you're not always chronically injured. So before we jump into the rubber band exercises, I want to hit possible causes so that you can make sure you check into your own self-care, your own daily habits and lifestyle to make sure you're not committing some of these mistakes, right? They're just mistakes. Um, but pushing too hard too often, we need to let our body rest to recover and heal. I have so much information on this on my website, climbinginjuriesolved.com, as well as different articles I've written. And I have videos on YouTube about this. But I have so much information out there on trying to educate you, inform you, and hopefully give you some better tactics and habits to ensure that you're not committing these, these mistakes and then again with load, uh, this plays into the rubber band exercises specifically is ensuring that we are applying load that is beneficial, 
that stimulates our body in a positive way to help it to heal, help it to get stronger and not just continuously beating it down. Okay. So that's where a bunch of the hand rehab stuff that I like to present comes in. It is very advantageous and supportive for you, especially if you like hangboard or more aggressive hands, specific climbing. Um, I'm thinking you guys who love to crimp and you guys that love to pull hard and throw to things and really dyno hard. This is going to be very supportive to you and help you to boost up your volume without just trashing your fingers and your pulleys and your tendons with lots of inflammation. We want to prep your body, support it, and back off of the stuff that really irritates it, if, if that makes sense. And if you have questions on any of this stuff, please reach out. My email is info at return to climbing.com or you can send it to my personal email email at drlisabrindc at gmail.com. But my goal for you is to be your safety net. So if uh, I want to give you all of the recommendations and options to empower you to be able to do your own rehab and ensure you're healthy on your own. But if you don't, I'm, and if you do have a major disaster or an issue you need help with, I'm here to kind of give you pointers, um, point out the stuff that you may be missing or we need to beef up a little bit or little tiny tweaks you can make that make all the difference. And I really am going to try, especially today, to break all the learning points into little bite-sized pieces so you can digest them. I have been told, because I work in medicine, I'm really trying to make it more user-friendly and more basic. So you let me know if any of this stuff is too basic today or if it's not basic enough, right? Because my goal is to be helping those of you that are the average climber, good climbers, newbies, as well as parents of climbers. So I want to be talking to you guys and ensuring that I'm offering what you guys want. So let me know, okay? Give me some feedback. Um, so here are the tools that I'm going to cover. Almost all of these are going to be covered. Well, all of them are definitely going to be covered in my master class, but or in my finger a rehab spotlight class, but today specifically, we're covering the rubber band exercises because if you go through this list of tools rated by cost, they are at the very bottom in price and they're actually free. You can just go around and find them. So that is an awesome, awesome trait of these that we can get you going with rehab that is affordable. Our goals for rehab, so this is often misunderstood, so I wanted to hit this very specifically because most of you guys when you do your rehab, we just tend to fly through your exercises very quickly and not realize why we're doing them. So if you've had a PT or you've been to physiotherapy and they've given you exercises, you need to understand the why am I doing this so, you, so that we know if they're effective and if they are serving you now, right? So really old exercises you haven't been doing, you may just want to throw them out and start with something else. So if they benefit you, awesome. If not, you're not noticing a benefit at all. Let's step back and look at these goals, especially with the ones I'm going to give you today for the rubber band. We're learning to work our fingers independently. So with climbing, a lot of times with climbing specific rehab tools, all the fingers are tied together and they are all forced to push against whatever tool you have at the same intensity. Okay, so with the rubber band, we can break that down into finger by finger um, specific exercises so that you can meet each finger where it is at and its strength, uh, focusing on its stability and its endurance. And each finger is going to be at a totally different starting point. We're going to work on recruitment patterns. So what is a recruitment pattern? A recruitment pattern is when you move a finger and you ask that finger to do something, what is that finger actually doing? So as you extend against the rubber band, is that finger staying in a nice arc or is it starting to shake or are the joints starting to hyperextend here and there? Controlling those fingers is everything. So if we can't do it with a rubber band here at home, how can we ask our body to stabilize on a wall somewhere with as much load as possible on that finger? You catch my drift is the, what I'm saying. And a lot of you guys think, well, we're just pulling down. But clipping and um, placing gear and pulling the rope, that is all extension exercises on the finger as well. So don't think that we're not using that in our day-to-day -day climbing. Also, my favorite part about this is as you do your exercises and you feel like maybe they're not benefiting you and we can make them harder and we can add more volume to them, but, but specifically as you do these exercises and as you start to make them a part of your life, your body adapts itself to what you're using your fingers for. 
So that's really, really cool because these adaptions are going to make you a better climber. And the number one thing, whenever I ask you guys what you want to gain out of a seminar, I'm noticing you want to prevent injuries, but more so we want endurance in our fingers and our hands and our forearms. And so as we're doing these rehab exercises, you're going to notice quickly within the first couple of weeks, I promise you put in the time, you're going to start to notice you're having better finger endurance because your body is building up these adaptions. And what that means is the body's bringing in more blood flow and in an area that has higher blood flow demands over time, the body is going to put more blood flow into that region by changing your circulatory system. So what that means is the body goes in and it's going to make bigger beds where the blood sits, capillaries, which are like underground lakes of blood. And so that blood is going to be closer to, to the end point of where it's needed so that your fingers and form isn't pumping out quicker. Okay. So the more you do these, the more your body's going to adapt itself to these. And then you're going to notice very quickly that you're feeling better because you're going to, your, your body's going to become more um, beneficial, much more smoothed out in waste management and oxygen transfer as well. So super, super important for why we're doing these exercises is for a short-term goal, medium goals, and long-term goals for our exercises. So rubber bands, where do I get them from, right? So look around at home, look around at your office if you have one, dig through all of your stuff that you're uh, climbing. <laughs> I get a lot of stuff that has rubber bands on it in packaging when I order it. And then also the produce section has a fabulous rubber bands that are actually wrapped around produce. So make sure you have a selection of rubber bands. I love rubber bands for rehab. Again, it's they're easy to find. It's super affordable. And then, we again, we can be so specific on each finger. So up on the top right, I have an assortment of rubber bands that I like. I have the very thick one that I show here. And then all the way down to a really, really thin one we can wrap a few times. So fabulous, fabulous. I love rubber band exercises because even if you're injured, we can still do them. And then also we're using them to train out shakiness of our fingers and ensure that we are, we are able to control our fingers even when they get exhausted, right? So I'm sure you're thinking like the end of the night when I'm climbing and I don't know about you, but when my fingers start just popping off the wall and I start yelling because I just can't control them and it's my final, final push for the night, all that just irritates me. And it happens if you're pushing yourself, it's excellent, but hopefully these exercises will keep, keep that from happening um, as quickly as it has been happening. So let's get on to starter rubber band exercises. These are my favorite three that I'm going to show you. The third one is by far the hardest in comparison, but these are very specific and we're teaching two finger control and we're also teaching uh, proprioception and position awareness. So as you move your finger in space, you're going to start to notice really quick your finger may not be where you think it is, and you may be moving a different finger more so than you think. Like some people I say, try to move your middle finger only, and their pointer finger is moving because that is the finger they use more often than their middle finger. So getting back to you as a climber, what fingers do you use the most? Those are probably better at doing your exercises than the finger you use the least, okay? So I want you to really, really focus on ensuring that each finger is, is holding its load, doing its work, so to speak, and that we're not just doing these rubber band exercises on your go-to climbing finger, um, but all the fingers around it, because we want to unload it a little bit. We want to support it, and we also want to give you more tricks on the wall for moves and feeling more stable in ways you haven't felt before because you'll be able to not only load those fingers but you'll be able to trust them because you've done all the homework with the rehab exercises so here's my favorite three a paired finger kick um, a buddy v and then also i load the injured finger or my unstable finger against my thumb and i can either only move the thumb to load into specific joints on that finger that are hypermobile or injured or i can hold the thumb specifically and I can move that finger and then using the thumb I can change the angle of the rubber band exercise and that's kind of complicated so we're going to get into that in a further slide. So let's get in each of these just to make sure that you have them and then we will uh, move on. So the first rubber band exercise 
I recommend starting with the easiest rubber bands and these photos is actually the hardest rubber band. So when we're loading with a rubber band, I at least want you to put it distal to the very first um, proximal interphalangeal joint, your pip joint. So if here is your knuckle, we at least want to put the rubber band distal to this one. So if you have an injury, the next joint down, or even like A4 pulley injury or A2 pulley injury, you're not going to hurt yourself doing these because your fingers are straight. However, if you have joint instability in your joints and you rubber you put the rubber band and you start to feel symptoms, just move a little bit closer to the palm doing your exercises and that should unload it. So the first one is just finger kicks. So we'll move one finger and then we'll move the other finger and then we'll move one finger and then we'll move the other finger. And then once that starts to get easy, we can do two at once. Now, some of you, and I have it um, up depending upon how adhered your flexor tendons are through here. There's also different anatomical adhesions that are normal in here. So, so some of you have tendons that are anchored through the palm and others do not. Okay. So if you cannot move one finger without moving the rest, or you notice one finger has less motion to it and it's on both sides, then you're just anatomically different and that's totally okay. So don't be hard on yourself. But the biggest thing with doing rubber band exercise, number one is to ensure that you are trying to recruit those fingers and move them inter interdependently from each other. So independently from each other. So we're going to go for eight to 12 reps, eight to 12 exercises. So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, all the way up to eight. We'll just start you with the, the intro for your first time through, and then we'll do three sets. So take a little break, shake it out, maybe take a minute, minute and a half break, and then come back to it. And you, the amount of time that you take off between these should be roughly similar to how much time you take off at the crag or in between the climbs at the gym. So if you need to set a timer, do it. But we need to train the body to be as close to what you would apply in the real world as possible. And those of you that don't take any climb off in between problems or routes, that could be why you're injured. Just saying. Very, very common. Not giving it enough break. And then buddy V's. So buddy V's, we're going to take the rubber band, looping it between the two, and then just straight side to side exercises. And again, I have shown these exercises with the hard rubber band. So you can very easily take a thin one and double loop it around. And you see that I loop it a few times around one finger. It's just to get the tension correct. Okay. So if you need to do a couple extra loops or no loops, totally fine. And the goal is as you're doing this, you want to hold this up to the camera, you want exactly perfect mirrored V's. Okay. You don't want one finger doing all the work. Okay. You want them exactly the same. So we're going to work on one and two and teach those how to do it. Two and three is hard, right? Because you may have some adhesions between them, but absolutely try to get two and three going. And then also three and four. And for some reason, my third finger, I'm a left-handed and this is my go-to climbing finger. So I have a lot of adhesions on this one. And it could just be I have that anat anatomical variation that it is anchored with extra suspensory ligaments in here. So if you cannot move that finger without <laughs> that in the pinky, that's okay. But I want you to keep working on it. Okay. See, there it goes. So that's going to be your homework is to be able to control and stabilize those. If you can't do it without rubber bands, or if you can't do it with, with the rubber band, I want you to step back and go through a bunch of them without rubber band to teach you the patterns. Very important to learn those. We can also take this exercise and make it way more difficult. So then we can start doing pairs of fingers that are opposing each other. And then um, we can, yeah, I would highly recommend second and fourth is my favorite one to to oppose each other. So absolutely give this one a try. And again, we're going for eight to 12 reps and then we're building up to three sets. So for the band level of difficulty, the color of the rubber band doesn't matter as much as the thickness of the rubber band. So grab all your rubber bands and then take them and lay them side by side. And you can compare the thickness of each rubber band to see which one is thicker and or you can also test it. So my purple medium produce band 
out of, I think that one's out of Peru, is not as firm as my green organic one um, compared with just the basic thick rubber band, which ended up being the hardest. So for you, take all your rubber bands, lay them out, and then make sure that when you're starting with these exercises, at least for the first two weeks, make sure that you start with your easiest band and then slowly start working your way up harder and harder and harder. So, and then I get to the fourth exercise, which is the hardest because we are holding our injured finger and we are stabilizing it from the thumb. Many of you may not be injured, totally fine. Um, but we can still do this with every single finger. But to target our injured fingers, we can take a hot, puffy, swollen, inflamed, acute finger, and we can still do our rehab exercises with it. And if it's too early to start bending and flexing that finger, this is where this exercise comes in as we can oppose it with a thumb. And then as we move where the thumb is in space, so we're holding that finger stable or we're just moving the thumb, we can move the thumb in all different directions, right? To change the angle of that exercise. So changing the loads going into your joints or into the finger itself as a whole. So not only are we exercising that joint, but we're also helping it to stabilize and build up tissue to help it to support its healing. So, so I call this one my expert level of of rubber band exercises because a little bit harder. And again, the angle can be changed merely by moving where the thumb is and the thumb can be in three different places. So we'll go into that in the next slide. Oh, and I also forgot that rubber band. If you have a hot puffy injured finger, we want instead of having that rubber band right on the injury, say you jam a joint, it's hot and puffy. I would start with the rubber band just a little bit more proximal or close to the palm from that injury. And then once that injury starts to heal and can handle pressure and load on it, then we can move that rubber band onto the injury. And then once that is painless, then we'll move it past the injury, if, if that makes sense. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out or put them in the comment section. And I absolutely will fill out info on this. So for the expert level of rubber bands, we just move either just the finger or the thumb. And specifically with this one I'm gonna give you, we're just gonna move the finger as the thumb provides a side load. So the, the difference between this and the one I just covered is that when you have an injury, you can just move the thumb. However, for those of you that don't have an injury, we're gonna side load it with the thumb, but we're just gonna move the finger, okay? So the thumb stays in one place and the finger moves. So, and then as we start to strengthen that finger, you can also add on and move the thumb at the exact same time. Okay, so the repetitions are gonna be, first we move the thumb, then we hold the thumb steady and we move the finger, and then once you have that down, then we move both at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna go for 12 perfect reps, and then as it starts to get easier, we're going to change the position of the thumb. So we can either move the thumb towards the first finger, we can move it towards the middle finger, or we can move it all the way down towards the fifth finger. So think about your area of injury. If you have an injury, we are loading this almost like a clock drill. So and that's why I put a photo of a clock. So if this is your injured finger and we're loading it from this direction, it's noon. And if we load it from this direction, <laughs> I'm trying to think backwards because this would be let's see here, 11 o'clock your time, 10 o'clock, six o'clock your time, right? Nine o'clock. So the different loads with the rubber bands can absolutely strengthen the, the muscles and the tendons around that joint and the ligaments around that joint without actually moving that finger. So here are one, two, three, the different angles we're loading between them. So in one, our hand is flat. In two, our thumb, is straight below your middle finger, so straight down towards the wrist. And then in three, our thumb is folded. And some of you guys don't have very much flexibility here, so just whatever we can get out of it to get you over towards the pinky. So, and then if we want to take your exercises and make them harder, say they feel way too easy, then we just take that rubber band and we move it closer to the tip. So the further out the finger that the rubber band is, the harder it is, which also then takes us into, let's start talking about goals, okay? 
because we don't just want to go super, super hard and injure you and blow you out of the water. Because most of you guys are going to be climbing at the same time that you're doing these exercises, and that's perfectly fine. So I would do the exercises as your warm up first before you climb and see how that feels with your hands. Hopefully, your climbing is awesome from doing the exercises. So we're going to start with 12 perfect reps per finger of each exercise, okay? And we're going to focus on the motion and the control at each joint, okay? And then we're slowly going to either increase your time or your reps, how many repetitions you're doing, or your load, how hard of a rubber band you're using, or how far down your finger the rubber band is anchored to make these more difficult. But I want you to treat each one of these like a different variable and don't bump them all up at the same time. Because if we decide to go for a minute and a half with the hardest band on your distal fingertip, you absolutely can blow yourself out of the water. And the goal is to use this right now is intro to your exercises and a nice warm up and not for strength, okay? So we're gonna do those warm up exercises first. Then you can make it harder and more difficult and more aggressive based on your training plan or your needs for today. So to get into your monthly goals, because a lot of you guys are like, Lisa, how quickly am I going to notice a benefit with these? Two weeks, okay? Two to three weeks, you're going to start noticing a huge benefit. And then you guys ask me, how quick do I start ramping up my training plan as for how much do I add onto these exercises. So the recommendation is every second or third week, you can modify them and make them harder. But I want you to keep it steady every week or every two to three weeks so that you're not pushing yourself too hard. Okay. So we start with 10 to 12 perfect reps per finger. Then we go two sets of 10 reps. So that is what our third week into it. Then we bump up to three sets of eight to 12 reps. So we're slowly increasing the volume of them. And our reps, just as a side note, should be very slow and controlled. I don't want you flapping around with your exercises because you don't get anything out of it, right? Because our goal with this is finger control, finger stability, and actually observing your finger and seeing where it is in space. So proprioception and position sense are so important and you can't learn that by flying through your exercises really quick. For those of you who want to have speed goals or you're into powerful dyno quick motions, once you have this beautiful firm base that we're building, then you can add that cherry on top. And what that would look like, I put it as item number four, is dealer's choice. You can either go for an endurance goal, which would be me because I do lots of long trad climbing or like all day um, sustained duration type climbing. I would go for a minute and a half slowly and steadily. For those of you that really want to get into speed and quick twitch muscle fibers, you would have a nice warm up of every single exercise we have you doing. Then we're going to go to five quick reps. And that is where you don't have to worry about position sense or proprioception or controlling that finger. You absolutely can just quickly get through those exercises, five of them. And then we're going to do two sets of those per finger. So that would be for those of you that actually do have a speed goal. That would be the next step up for your monthly goals. So just giving you some guidance as to where to go from here with your exercises. So your rehab timeline, if you were to pull out a calendar, if you're someone that likes to chart this into your training plan, I've laid that out for you all the way up to week nine. Just this, all the same stuff we were talking about all the way up to week six. Speed is not our goal. And then once you start moving into week seven to week nine, we start becoming a little bit more specific for what type of a climber you are and what your needs are in climbing. And that's where the diversity comes in of your training plan. If everyone's going to go a different direction as for what their goals are. So I listed that out for you so you can follow it. So for those of you that are injured and you're worried about hurting yourself with these rubber band exercises, if you have an injury that is not healed yet and we're doing exercises with it, one, I think that exercises are really important to do while your finger is injured because we're pumping blood flow to it. And it's so far away from your heart, it's hard to get blood flow there, okay? So you're riding the bike, you're running, you're doing something, anything to pump blood flow into that area. Um, if you have a gym, I love the hand ergo machines to pump blood flow as well. You can stay out of the fingers and just pump, pump, pump. Those, the Olymp 
Olympians have access to those. Um, one of the fancier gyms I went to did have those. So most of them do not. Uh, but yeah, just looking to see what, what we can what we can support you with. I would recommend the lightest band. There's no problem with starting too light with our rehab, but there is a problem if we start too aggressively, especially if you have a jam joint, a joint that's shifted, or a joint that is easily predisposed to inflammation, puffiness, or if it's an old cranky finger with a bunch of de degenerative um, goodness inside of the joint. We'll, we'll call it that to be nice. Uh, we want to make sure that we are easing into it and not pushing so hard that we set our body up for this huge inflammatory response. So we can either pick the lightest band on just distal to where your injury is, or we can place the band, stay off the injury completely and, and just be one joint closer if that makes sense. So if your injury was on your dip joint, you can place the band, if it's very light, all the way out on the distal tip, or we can stay off your dip joint and we can put the band on your A4 or that middle, that middle bone of your finger. But as always, if, you're, if you've been to an MD, you've been to a PT and they have recommendations or advice, they know your body better than I do. I'm just applying an overall training plan for you guys and trying to give you some pointers. So again, when in doubt, or if it's a hot puffy injury, please be gentle with it while we wait for it to heal and try to keep it moving as best we can. But sometimes you guys are in a splint or you guys are supporting it and compressing it. And that's where the thumb resistance comes in. Okay. Just to keep it moving, but keep that finger straight and you can even rehab it with the splint on. Okay. So for those of you that have unstable joints or you have a ligament injury, let's say you load that joint and it starts shifting around or it feels very at risk of shifting sideways, this is where we have to be a little bit more cautious of our loading of these joints because if we leave them alone and we give it time with inflammation and it's not shifting, hopefully that joint capsule is going to contract back up with time and that joint will be nice and stable. But if we keep loading through the joint and that joint keeps shift, shift, shifting, then it's not going to tighten up and become stable and we don't want to make it worse. So we want to one, make sure we pick a band that's light enough that you're not noticing any irritation, shifting, puffiness, or pain out of that area with any of your exercises. And that holds true to all injuries that we're rehabbing at this time. We want to make sure, again, that our exercises are supportive and they are benefiting you and making you better and not beating you down and causing more inflammation and damage. All right. So that's the fine line, almost like the angle of how much load is too much load before you get injured, kind of that precipice of how hard you should push. And that is that's our goal, right? So if you have pain, if you have symptoms, we want to pick an easier band and or another option would be to use kinesio tape over that injury to give it a little bit of compression, a little bit of stability, and also squeeze some of that swelling out of that area. So the learnings, I hope you learned a lot from this little tiny mini um, mini masterclass. Our goal is to ensure that we can give you just a few exercises you can implement right away and also to give you enough pointers and advice that you can navigate injuries. So if you have questions on this, let me know, but hopefully you can now safely navigate your injuries by making your exercises easier and or moving that band off of the injury. And then also I want to make sure with the spotlight that you're confident that you know enough you can start implementing these exercises and that they're doable, something you can put in your daily routine. So I'm so honored that you joined me and I have a, another course coming up and I would love to have you check out my rice bucket course that's coming up. I'm going to be giving you step-by-step -step exercises, everything we did with the rubber band, but it's going to be rice bucket specific. So there'll be more info on my website when that becomes available. Just a hint, it's not there yet. And so that's the end. And I appreciate any questions and comments you guys might point out towards me. So I want to know what you thought of the material. I sure would like to know if any of this is something that you might be interested in implementing or if it's something that you're not that interested in so I can custom tailor my lectures to give you guys the most bang for the buck. Also, what ideas did I point out that you're the most interested in in, in today's little mini course? 
And did any of the exercises strike you as something that would be unhelpful? And I would love to know why. So those of you that give me the, the best feedback, I'm going to be going through all the feedback and the most you can give me the most you can give me the better. And then those of you that just give me fabulous, excellent feedback, I'm going to pick one of you guys and you're going to have a free entry into my next course. So thank you so much for all of the help and all the feedback you guys can give me to make my courses better. And this mini spotlight was just a tiny little splattering of what's going to show up in my hand stability spotlight, which is coming up soon. Um, so that's something you might be interested in. And I just want to point it out so you know that it's out there. And this is a tiny little bit of hand putty of one exercise I call a knuckle squeeze that's presented in that. So if you're interested, I give you a nice little discount with a link to click. And we're going to cover hand putty, rice buckets, flex bar, the Kando hand web. And then I think I might make um, a little bit of an intro to finger weights, which are pretty darn cool. So grab your seat if you're interested. If not, that's totally fine. And then, yeah, I'm going to put all kinds of hand putty stuff in there as well as hand web stuff in there. So one of my favorite hand web exercises, just to give you guys a little bit of like, how does the hand web work is you stick your fingers through the holes of it and then you can round them and you can use it for wrist warm ups. So one of my favorite wrist exercises out there with the hand web is what I call alphabets. And it's like you're writing your great grandma a letter. And this is teaching you how to control and stabilize your wrist under load. And so we're loading the wrist and we are writing the letter D or the letter E. And it might be interesting that once your wrist is under load, all of a sudden it becomes hard for you to control or to stabilize it. And I see that time and time again on the wall when you guys grab onto a hold and then your wrist just gives under load. And so if you have wrist injuries, that may be something you want to look into. And for those of you that want free info, I have so much free stuff out there for you because my goal is to give you all the tools you need to have a fabulous year of climbing without injury, okay? I want those injuries gone. So I love giving you step-by-step -step plans, checklists, tutorials. And so I have links to all those on YouTube and um, Instagram, on Facebook. And then I have a brand new podcast out there called Unsprained. So here's links to all of those. And I just appreciate you being here. And I would love any feedback you have on this little mini spotlight. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye.